What's up guys? Greasy white boy here. You know what's something crazy? If the sock don't fit, we must acquit. Oh, that's shit. Innocent. This is a real story, all right, about a real guy named Orange Juice Shrimpson, I think. I'm not sure. He recently died, and the public is in an uproar, kind of. Not really, but kind of. I've been wanting to make a video about OJ Shrimpson for a while, and I haven't, because it's honestly not that interesting. But now that he's died, it's incredibly interesting. OJ Simpson, a pro football Hall of Famer who would later be tried and ultimately acquitted of double murder in one of the most publicized trials in American history has died at 76 years old after a battle with cancer. I will do what I always do and give you the facts hard, fast, unbiased, and with as little fat as possible. This is the lean description of the story of OJ Shrimpson. Oh, Lois, I'm so sorry. Uh, it's all right, OJ. L let, me, let me get something to clean that up. Ooh. Ah! Oh my god! Many believe that in spite of OJ getting off scot-free from his hearing over the murder of his wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, he was in fact the murderer. He did actually do it. I didn't do it! And there's a crazy series of events that happened from then until now, and all the things that are in... <sighs> associated with it that make you really scratch your head. It's a really interesting, long, old story that uh, I'm sure a couple of you 19-year-olds out there will really enjoy this. Maybe even a 20 or a 30-year-old. Did you guys know I'm about to interview the future president of the United States of America? Anyways, here we're going to take a look back into the old life of OJ and see whether or not he actually did it. I will be acting today in this video as Judge jury executioner non-biased 100 we're going to be looking at his achievements his confessions and all that over the years guys <laughs> from him telling us i did it to jokes that seem like truly an admittance of guilt guys today we're looking back at the juice just did you do it <laughs> no, I didn't. Many people believe, despite the fact that OJ got off scot-free from his hearing uh, of the murder of his ex-wife and boyfriend, that he was, in fact, the man who did it. People think that OJ was the murderer. They really, a lot of people do. Most people online, it seems like. OJ killed everybody in that driveway. <laughs> Let's just, to hell with all this, OJ killed both them people. Mr. Shrimpson was a very talented running back all the way back in his collegiate days of playing football when he played for the University of Southern California after transferring from the City College of San Francisco in 1967. He set 19 rushing records en route to two All-America selections and college football's most prestigious award in 1968. So it was a long time ago. The NFL kind of knew a little bit. He did track and field shit. Dude was just an overall badass athlete. And by God, he looked good doing it too. Oh yeah, he was handsome and talented and just very, very good. Now let's see. <laughs> the nation's number one rusher showing you why he has those staggering statistics. This is back when they wore those fucking Doofenshmirtz helmets. Like, it just looks really stupid, I don't know. It's always really funny to me to look at those helmets back then. Just like, man, how'd they take them seriously? God, they look dumb. By God, I really need to reinforce the fact that he was good. He won the Heisman Trophy. That's an incredibly prestigious award for collegiate football athletes. If you've never heard of it, it's a big deal. It's a pretty fucking big deal, to be honest. I'm delighted to present to you this 34th Heisman Trophy symbolic of your achievement as the outstanding collegiate football player in the country. Congratulations, Thank you. It looks like this. Pretty cool. <laughs> O.J. Simpson was, in fact, so good at college football that he was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. That's right, the one brought to you by Chick-fil-A. He was inducted in 1983. He was recognized for his achievements in, in college football back then. Very impressive. I mean, it's it's awesome. This is very cool. O.J. Simpson's the, the one. He is the icon. He is... What he did at USC, he was arguably one of the greatest college, uh, the greatest college football uh, player of all time, up until a lot of these other running backs came in. You know, between 23 blasts, one of the iconic runs in college football history, he should have won two Heismans, definitely should have won the 67 Heisman as well as winning in 68. He was absolutely great. He was everything you want in a back, sprinter speed, big, fast, tough, 
He was everything. So you do that, you're going to make it to the big leagues. The big leagues would be the NFL. Buffalo select O.J. Simpson, halfback, University of Southern California. And when he got into the NFL, he played for basically the two biggest teams at the time, the Buffalo Billenheimers and the San Francisco 69ers. He's the best running back at a time when the most important part of the offensive game is running the football. I think you could easily argue that O.J. Simpson is the most valuable player of the 70s for the entire league. Both teams, not a huge fan of. I like the Bills, they're okay. I've never liked the 49ers, the 69ers, whatever the f I will never like them. I think they're dumb. I hate them. Honestly, him playing for them makes me like him less. And he's got like a lot of stuff that makes me not like him that much, to be honest. You know, like the double murder of his ex-wife and boyfriend. Allegedly. Not his boyfriend, her boyfriend. Now you may say, well, the Buffalo Bills, they weren't that good. They've never been to the Super Bowl because they suck. They suck. They actually just suck. He, when he played for them, they never made it to the Super Bowl. He was not going to play in a Super Bowl. There was no shot. So he has this game on Thanksgiving where he rushes for 273 yards. Proof that the best football player in the world is just sort of being wasted on this team going no place he would make it to their wall of fame where he still resides embarrassingly enough for his incredible talents of murder Purely hypothetical 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 yes. they did make it to one playoff game where they lost to the steelers 32 to 14 which is kind of embarrassing i don't know why i wanted to include that stat in there actually it's just because it's embarrassing and it's pretty funny. Um, how come the Buffalo Bills haven't made a statement about OJ <laughs> yet? He's on their wall of fame. Why don't they say something? This OJ Simpson situation is really coming to a head. Wow. He's a legend. I've never personally shaken hands with a murderer. Oh, yeah. It's good to see you. Thank you. He was pretty good, man. He was pretty good in the NFL and he was pretty good in football just in general. Pretty, pretty, pretty solid, talented, all around all-around guy. On Thanksgiving 1976, Buffalo's quarterback completed four of 21 passes for 29 yards. O.J. Simpson ran 29 times for a then single game record 273 yards in defeat. As you can imagine, you know, you get inducted to the College Football Hall of Fame. He was inducted to the Pro Football Hall of Fame as well. Dude's just athletic. That's how it goes. Little would those NFL people know that he had another skill that he he wouldn't have made very clear when getting into sports. We're just gonna touch on some calves here. When we do this, keep the legs straight, but the knees soft. So OJ comes out of the NFL as a champ, retired from the 49ers in 1979. He goes into film, television, and dance, workouts. Big, huge in the 80s and 90s, massive. Dude was the king of side hustles. As am I, by the way, go to sour.gg. We have a new flavor launch on Friday, as well as this upcoming Monday. That is the 19th and 22nd. We will sell out quickly. So give us your email address. We'll send you an email. Email folks get to know first before any videos go up. Go to sour.gg buy some candy we'll also have three new cool flavors hopefully in the next month and then hopefully a new flavor about every two weeks from now until the end of time that's right i have a sour candy company it's all us it's not white labeled it's not like this other youtuber shit product merch stuff you're used to it's pretty good it's pretty good and if you don't like it just tell us and we'll give you your money back because we care about customer service as well because i'm not just doing it for you know money i'm doing it because i love it which is an alien idea a couple side hustles though you know the dude was fucking into some shit football film tv movies murder the juice definitely hopped on the exercise dance aerobic vhs selling trend of the 80s and 90s and made a lot of money off of these i think these were recorded and published weeks by the way before he would murder his ex-wife and her boyfriend allegedly in fact these were and i quote videotaped from may 25th to may 27th 1994 at oj shrimpson's house on rockingham avenue less than three weeks before his arrest for the <laughs> for the double murder of his ex-wife and her boyfriend allegedly funny fun fact and for a bit of additional context the tapes were actually used in court as evidence to go against the claim that oj was not physically capable of carrying out the, the murders his workout tapes showed his physical prowess literally weeks before the double murder it helped with the prosecution claims well it didn't help that much because he <laughs> was acquitted tapes themselves by the way mind-boggling not a huge fan hey i'm oj simpson now you may know me as a sportscaster a commercial pitchman or an actor but i also played some pro football a while back but that was a couple of years ago a couple of good knees ago 
at a couple of million frequent flyer miles ago. Dude is well spoken, I've got to say. He's well, well, well spoken. I really like listening to him talk. And honestly, his acting and stuff, this is all after the naked gun shit. I love those movies so much. And I still watch them and I'm like, he seems like a nice guy. Maybe he maybe he didn't do it. <laughs> right, give this man some drugs. Quick, catch you see some pain. No. Give him a shot, quickly. No. Heroin. Heroin, Frank. Nordberg, that's a pretty tall order. You're gonna have to give me a couple of days on that one. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh wait! Wait till you get to the other shit we're about to talk about. I've never seen so much evidence against someone in a case that's gone to trial as there was against OJ Simpson, ever. Thank you, Orange Juice Simpson, for helping me deal with the stresses in my life, like traveling, living in hotels, and dealing with the immense stress of killing my ex-wife. I don't have any shortcuts or any tricks, but I've learned a few methods over the years that help turn my bad habits into good habits and deal with the stressors in my life, like traveling, living in hotels, and not getting enough sleep. Which I didn't do, by the way, because the sock don't fit, which means I must acquit or whatever. Imagine making a fucking slogan for a, for a double murder, <laughs> double murder trial. It doesn't fit. If it doesn't fit. You must acquit. Hope they find that guy that killed his ex-wife. Here's a little tip to deal with stress at the office. Hey, take a one minute vacation. I call it my little getaway. You know, close your eyes. Take a few deep breaths and just, you know, imagine you're at hmm, some favorite uh, vacation spot. You know, try to fantasize a little bit, you know? Think about the past, something that brought you joy. My little getaway, driving a white Bronco down the 405, heading down to the airport for a little vacation. As I like to call it, a little vacation. And by that I mean running from the law. Get that blood flowing, fellas. Uh, by the way, if you're ever angry or have too much stress, OJ has plenty of tips for you guys, like this one here. Very, very effective for us men. When I'm a little angry or I have a little too much stress, I have a little trick. I sit down, take some deep breaths, and I think of Mount St. Helen. You know, I think of uh, the explosion and all of that energy building up. And I see it exploding and shooting all of the dust and the stuff into the air. And I just get all that energy exploding out of me. What the fuck's that mean? And then you go on a damn killing rampage? Is that what that means? Is that what he's trying to insinuate or no? No. Make sure to practice your swings too, just in case you need to, you need to defend yourself against a murderer that's trying to kill your trying to kill your ex-wife. This that new shit, by the way. This is so lame. This is so fucking dumb. Sure, it gets your blood pumping a little bit, but guess what? It's not gonna get you in physical shape to successfully commit a double murder. Actually, maybe it did. We're gonna make this painless as possible. Thanks for the killer workout, OJ. Appreciate it, buddy. All in all, Mr. Juice made some tapes for older men to get in shape. Pretty cool. He made a lot of money. Who could have predicted that merely weeks later, his ex-wife would be murdered under mis suspicious murder consequences? Ever been in a cockpit before? No, sir, I've never been up in a plane before. You ever seen a grown man naked? Huh? Before we get into the murder, I do want to talk a little bit more about his acting career because it's actually fun and I like it. And I really want to talk about this part because I love Leslie Nielsen. It's more so a shout out to Leslie. May God rest his soul in heaven. And a little shout out to OJ Simpson as well. It's hot down there, isn't it? I do love the phenomenon back in the olden days when people could just do whatever they wanted. I mean, Elvis was a very successful, talented actor that achieved great success, also musician, etc. All these people just kind of did whatever they want. They just, you know, crushed it in one field, crushed it in another field, crushed it in another field, and then just fucking, oh, uh, oh, uh, da, 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 da. Eventually. Stop it. It's okay. It's okay, my children. OJ kind of paved the way for athletes turning into massive, incredibly successful people across the board. I mean, think of Shaquille O'Neal now, super successful. I have to touch it. No one touches the Shaktus. Who else? Peyton Manning's been in some ads. Say it with me. Say it with me. Here we go. Let's go, insurers and justice. Let's go. Grill. Let's go, insurers and justice. Let's $80. go. $80. Cut that meat. Sandwich. Cut that meat. Six dollars. Cut that meat. Gas. And it's full. Twenty dollars. You're my favorite accountant. Tommy, please. Johnny, please. You're on my fantasy team. You're my favorite worker. Fans. Yes. Woo! Priceless. Who else is an athlete that's been in movies and is actually funny? 
not LeBron. There's not that many of them, actually, now that I think about it. But the dude was a, a, a legend, a legend in this sort of thing. Look at all of his acting credits. God, he was in such good movies, too. Like, all of these are just so fucking insanely good. For those more inept at interpreting social cues, I'm being very facetious. Naked Gun sucks, and I still like it, regardless. He had a terrible acting career. Let go of that fella. OJ had 37 acting credits from 1968 all the way to 2004. His IMDb is pretty cool, actually. My favorite part is the banner video at the very top that quite literally shows a film that says on the intro cut, the only film in 25 years that OJ Simpson does not want you to see. What the f I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Is that, is it a film about him potentially, you know, doing that thing that he did to his ex-wife. God, I love the Naked Gun movie so, so, so much. It's unironically one of the most silly, perfect franchises of all time. Nordberg! Hiya, buddy. Hey! Doc says I should be on my bean and as good as new in a week. And back on the force. Nordberg, that's wonderful. Whoa! Come, Frank. Everyone should have a friend like you. Unfortunately, OJ's final appearance in film would be in a movie called Mayday Z, which is supposed to launch next year. It'll come out post-mortem. It's got Tara Reid in it, which is a girl, I think, that's used to be famous or something. And it looks like absolute dog shit poopy caca. But it's got huge, huge people in it. Nordberg. That's right, guys. He's Nordberg in this movie, the character from Naked Gun. How does that work? How is this some kind of crossover? I'm not sure, but it's gonna be cool. I'm sure I'm gonna watch it. Hey, OJ, you sure enjoy that Golden Pioneer chicken. Oh yeah, I love it. What Orange Juice is actually most known for is, take a wild guess, guys. Take a wild guess. Murdering double. Two people. It's kind of what he's known for, guys. The night of the crime was June 12th, 1994. We might never know exactly what happened on that night, but Brown and her friend Ron Goldman were found dead at Brown's townhouse in Brentwood, Los Angeles. This event essentially put his acting career to rest, all right? He couldn't make it. Can you shut the f*** up, please? By the way, the murder murders are alleged because he was acquitted, and you can't really say that. I mean, you can kind of say it. Yeah, you can pretty much say it. Anyways, here are the murders. Very sad, very f***. Up. Let's get into it. On June 12th, 1994, the bodies of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman were found having been stabbed to death. Nicole was so brutally murdered that her head was nearly decapitated from her body. The imagery surrounding the crime scene is disgusting and, and, and messed up. It's just, it's, you know, it's it's been very widely publicized. I don't know how old you guys are. I was just old enough to have been born right after this shit happened, right after the hearings to where it was still a big meme in the world and in pop pop culture. So I knew the Bronco joke. I was like, Bronco? What's Bronco, Dad? And my dad was like, Well, this fella, OJ Simpson, brutally murdered his ex-wife and her boyfriend. And that's that's my dad's words, not mine. Uh, so I kind of understood it, right? I don't know if you guys, if you remember it, SNL bits. There's a lot of bits about it. Potential jurors for the OJ Simpson. Simpson case were asked to fill out a 75 page jury questionnaire this week in the entire state of California only one person got a perfect score Chow Ming Wu who after the trial plans to attend Caltech anyways back to the murder information Nicole still had the surname Simpson but she had been divorced from OJ for two years since 1992 the next day after the murders OJ was on a business trip in Chicago he was notified, returned to LA, and he was temporarily handcuffed and questioned. So he wasn't initially charged because there wasn't much in the form of evidence since the murder had just happened. It was just a day after. In fact, the main piece of evidence that was found at the scene was a glove. And that is a very infamous
infamous piece of evidence we'll be talking about quite a bit in this video. So if he was in Chicago and the only thing they found was a glove, why was he suspected potentially? He was suspected because over the course of OJ's seven-year marriage to Nicole, he was accused of domestic violence or domestic abuse multiple times. And to top that off, the police had been called to visit their home on several occasions. In fact, in the beginning of 1989, OJ was charged with spousal abuse following a New Year's Day argument in which he would tell his wife, Nicole, I'll kill you after he'd hit her and kicked her. So not really that good of a look. By the way, that isn't even alleged per se because OJ entered a no contest plea, which doesn't mean it's an admission of guilt, but you can be judged as guilt. It's basically like a rich person with giant ego, a way to get out of something and be able to, I don't you know, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. It does make sense when you really consider what happened after, to be honest, the double murder of Nicole Brown Simpson and boyfriend. By the way, I did mention he was in Chicago and that was kind of like a sort of alibi thing, but he was in LA the night of the murder and he caught a flight around midnight to Chicago the night of the murder. So he was, you know, he had some business to attend to in LA and then around midnight flew to Chicago. Simpson had flown to Chicago on the night of the murders. He'd also been taken to the airport by a Mr. Park in his limousine. It's thought that this happened sometime after the murders probably happened. And we know this is factual because he had gone to McDonald's with his friend Kato, a sex icon. Very nice. Thank you, Kato, sex icon. Rarely do we talk about sex icons on this channel. Sex icons like Kato. So a bit of time goes on and eventually the police would determine that they had enough to bring in OJ for proper justice to be sort of delivered or whatever. At OJ's house, another bloody glove was found and it matched the glove found at Brown's house. More blood was seen leading from Simpson's parked car. It was later discovered that the victim's blood was on both gloves, which gave police probable cause to arrest Simpson. And in that moment, we have a very infamous moment in true crime history, and that is the famous chase. California it's, it's Highway Patrol has here. now confirmed to CNN that it is definitely yeah, our Cal's no vehicle. And they are almost certain that OJ is in the passenger seat. Yeah! You get him, OJ! Yeah! Would you stop interjecting in my very important video I'm making about OJ Shrimpson, you f Can you guys believe I'm in a garage right now in an office talking about OJ Simpson making money? And then there's my dogs right here. They get to watch me just in pure terror. They're just like, why is he yelling? What's happened to him? Murder. Double murder homicide? What? So the great escape is as follows. June 12th, 1994, Nicole Simpson and Ronald Goldman are stabbed to death. The next day, their bodies are found and OJ is notified of this during his business trip in Chicago. He's brought in, questioned, and then let go. Uh, you know, nothing big. After OJ was temporarily released, he had about five days until June 17th to really stew on what he had done, uh, allegedly or whatever. But because he's innocent, obviously this wouldn't be a big deal, but he is rearrested because the police find some more evidence. They want to tie him and they want to ask him about some stuff that ties him to the situation. And he decided to flee in a white Bronco heading south on the 405, driven not by him, but by his friend, AC Cowlings. By the way, this is one of the most memed events of all time and my favorite scene from Shrek 2. We got a white Bronco heading east into the forest, requesting backup. It's time for the men in steel to teach these mad cat mammals their devil may mare attitudes just won't fly. All right, Police brutality! Police brutality! Come on! I have to talk to Princess Fiona! Ow! I love Shrek 2. Guys, I love Shrek 2. Even Family Guy really likes making fun of O.J. Simpson. Luckily, they were helped by Nate's good friend, Al Cowlings, who showed up on his trusty white Bronco. But the law was hot on their trail. Well, we're getting a good view of the chase from up here, Tom. That's right, Diane. We're looking at Nate Griffin and Al Cowlings, the man we believe to be Al Cowlings. We'll stay with the chase. Um, it seems like a futile effort on their part, Diane. At some point, that horse is going to have to stop and eat some grain. The whole world, including me. Just kidding, I was a fetus. I wasn't even a fetus. I was in my dad's ball sack. But I was watching from my father's ball sack. People were filming. People were calling in. He had f***ing five stars, just like in GTA. The whole world was watching. Yeah. 
people were cheering him on. They were like, yeah, go, Juice, yeah, go, go. <laughs> Would you stop it? God damn, you're ruining the fun. That's a helicopter reporting, talking to KCAL, saying, look at all those cars on that bridge looking down. This is a uh, living drama. There's, no, there's nothing else you can say, but we're going to stay with it. You're like, you're like, never mind. I was going to say that I'm... Bizarrely enough, even A.C. Cowlings, the driver of the car, called the police to let them know what was happening and where the f*** they were going. Very strange stuff. 911, what are you reporting? This is, this is A.C. I have O.J. in the car. Okay, where are you? Please, I'm coming up the 5 freeway. Okay. Right now, we all we are okay, but you gotta tell the police to just back off. He's still alive, but he got a gun to his head. Is everything else okay? Everything right now is okay, officer. Supposedly, during the chase, O.J. was sitting in the back seat with a 357 Magnum pointed at his own head during the chase, which... 100% is the behavior of an innocent man. I have no doubt in my mind of this. This insane shit went on for like 45 minutes. They pulled up to OJ's mansion and he let the police arrest him. The Bronco became major evidence in the case, obviously, because he <laughs> ran away from a... From a <laughs> It also had some interesting gear in it, by the way. It had $8,000 of cash, a 357 Magnum, a passport, family photos, a fake goatee, and a set of clothes. Wow, that's kind of bizarre for, for a fucking Bronco to have in it, especially of one of, of a man who's suspected for the murder of his ex-wife and his ex-wife's boyfriend. It's normal, guys. Give him a break. Cut him some slack. <laughs> I bet the glove doesn't even fit. The car obviously became a massive part of the court case and was accepted into evidence. Pretty cool. Nice car. I wish I had it, honestly. I f love Broncos, especially that year, especially the white ones. They look so good. Shit, I would buy that. But guess who beat me to it? OJ Simpson's manager, an agent, a guy named Mike Gilbert. That seems f***ing insane. The car is now owned by Mike Gilbert, Simpson's agent at the time Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman were murdered. Gilbert keeps it in this garage in Central California, 200 miles from Los Angeles. He asked us not to reveal the exact location. Very strange to have that car as someone so closely associated with OJ, you know. He wasn't that obsessed with the car, though. He tried to sell it for, for $1.3 million to Pawn Stars. There's a glove back here. No, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> About to cruise on the freeway, chum. Feel that power? It ended up in a museum eventually. Pretty cool. I want it. I really want it. I want it bad. Give me money so I can have it, guys. Give me money. Buy me, buy some candy at sour.gg. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. And now we get to the trial of the century. One of the most high profile cases of all time. We have the alleged murder of O.J. Simpson's ex-wife and her boyfriend by O.J. Simpson himself. Seems bad from the very beginning because, you know, he went on the run, had an alleged history of alleged abuse allegedly, but not also allegedly at all. If not a jail cell, brother was at least going to see a courtroom for sure. Just want to point out his mugshot too. Bro has a fucking insane jawline. Where did he get that shit at? All right, where'd Matt Reif get his at? Same place. If you know anything about court cases and hearings, etc., they're usually determined by a jury. And since OJ Simpson is a very loved, famous man, it's difficult to find an unbiased jury that will actually vote honestly, and not just because they're like, I love Juice, I love him. Literally everybody alive in 1994 who was old enough to be a, a, a juror in Los Angeles at the time had seen him at some point or had some kind of connection to him from either A, watching the Naked Gun, advertisements, NFL, etc. The dude permeated quite literally every single market from film to field and was on one of the most viewed police chases of all time 94 million interrupted the nba finals what the f not everybody does that that's pretty sick his actions in the broncos seem like the actions of a very guilty man with a muddied conscience with the whole fake goatee and the sort of implication of fleeing the country but he, his stance going into the trial would be a stance of incredible and substantial conviction he didn't plead guilty he didn't plead not guilty he pled absolutely 100% not guilty. Matter of People versus Orenthal, James Simpson. How do you plead to counts one and two? Absolutely 100% not guilty. This f***ing trial lasted for 11 months from November 1994 all the way to October 1995. Just 
a short year before I was born, by the way. I was still in my dad's ball sack when it was going on at the very end. Still in his ball sack. I'd be in his ball sack for two more months until, yeah, obviously. Absolutely 100% not guilty. <laughs> Slam the javelin now, judge. <laughs> There's no way this man's guilty. I believe him shit, man. I've never heard anybody say I'm absolutely 100% not guilty. During the 11 month trial, the mountain of evidence would climb higher and higher and higher and higher. And it's honestly unbelievable that this motherfucker was acquitted. I cannot believe this shit. It's crazy. Nicole's head was nearly decapitated from her body, almost like a large muscular athlete and that won the Heisman Award was a perpetrator of this horrible, disgusting murder, or maybe someone who taught workout classes. Blood was found in OJ's Bronco on his driveway in his foyer. Okay. A blood-soaked sock was found in OJ's bedroom. Whose blood? I don't know. Maybe this guy just has a rare, just random bleeding disorder or something. Or maybe he perpetrated the double murder of Nicole Brown Simpson and her boyfriend. Oh guys, by the way, blood was also found on a glove at OJ's house, a glove that matched the glove found at the crime scene. At OJ's house, another bloody glove was found and it matched the glove found at Brown's house. More blood was seen leading from Simpson's parked car. It was later discovered that the victim's blood was on both gloves. A trial like this is more rare than the solar eclipse we just saw guys it's so absurd it makes no sense the, i mean the only one with as high of a production value would be johnny depp versus amber heard but that shit made more sense than this this makes no fucking sense i wish this would have happened while i was a youtuber oh my god i would have made so many videos about it so there was a bit of a cherry on top uh, of this mountain of evidence and that was the theatrics involved in the trial guys especially when it came to the magical gloves the defense rallied around the phrase if it doesn't fit you must acquit which is like just so logical and makes a lot of sense they also put forth this defense while wearing a knit cap in regard to the allegation that oj was dressed in disguise that night oj simpson in a knit cap from two blocks away is still oj simpson it's no disguise, it's no disguise, it makes no sense, it doesn't fit, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. They obviously made OJ put the gloves on during court to see if they fit, and it appeared as though they, to me, someone who has worn gloves, it looked like they did fit, uh, but I'm not sure. All right, directors reflect that Mr. Simpson has both gloves. Yes. It's quite funny watching him very clearly put them on and just like push them like he's like opening his hand up and stuff. Good actor, honestly. Best acting he's ever fucking done. By the way, this right there is one of the main lawyers in the defense for OJ and is also Kim Kardashian's dad. If you guys didn't know, it's Robert Kardashian pretty wild sort of scenario. This whole thing led to the Kardashian show and like preceded the, the, the brain rot of our generation. This guy, by the way, he stays awake at night, he said, questioning the innocence of OJ. He said that himself. His own defense lawyer said that shit and also died from like karmically induced cancer, it seems. Robert, not OJ, but OJ did too. It's like he was running for office with this fucking chant. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. <laughs> So, in spite of all this, I said earlier he was acquitted. You see, you see, you guys already know how it how it went. It seems like it would be a fucking layup for the prosecution. The jury had other plans in mind, and they declared him innocent somehow. Some fucking how. I have no idea why or how. It's ridiculous. That's uh, that's Justin Bieber, and that's uh, Jaden Smith. Jaden Smith. They are bumping and grinding because they're so popular that's a lawyer that's how except he was very surprised to see that he was very surprised to see that his client was not guilty yeah, 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 not guilty robert kardashian though he's like man that was a hell of a paycheck but uh you know 
but I'm gonna have to deal. I'm gonna have to pay for this. On the flip side, you can see how devastated the family of the victims were, understandably so, because it seemed like the only obvious decision would be a guilty decision. And it just seemed like the, the jury was made up of, of a bunch of, of a bunch of idiots. I mean, honestly, that's what it seemed like. Pretty unfortunate. OJ Simpson is a free man, isolated perhaps from the highly emotional reaction that has been coming in all day to the verdict. As is legally required, the jurors were asked, is this your verdict? And all 12 answered, yes. That's basically the trial. Pretty much unbelievable. And it ends with, in a vacuum, the jury being a bunch of fools and like how the f does this make any sense? Why did they find him innocent? There has to be some kind of ulterior motive. Well, I wasn't around at the time. I don't really know, but uh, people debate this topic in a way that I will never really truly understand once again, because I was not alive at that time. Surveys show that only 10% of African-Americans in the US thought he was guilty. The final jury, many of them black Americans, were also later said to have been somewhat blinded or moved by the race issue. OJ even said to his lawyer joking, if this jury says I did it, maybe I did do it. There have been quite a few clips circulating that indicate the case was just a sham and the jurors did this as revenge for the, the Rodney King situation. And I say that, and it seems ironic because I say shit like as a situation or whatever, but that was a very incredibly large deal at the time and still is, obviously. This is some kind of payback, basically. Now, with this narrative, I'm not sure exactly how accurate it is. There is an interview clip of a juror from the trial back in the day that uh, admitted that 90% of them knew that he quite literally just did it, but they still went with not guilty. Do you think that they're members of the jury? that voted to acquit OJ because of Rodney King? Yes. You do? Yes. How many of you think felt that way? Oh, probably 90% of us. 90%? Did you feel that way? Yes. That was payback? Uh-huh. You think that's right? So I personally don't think that that's right, but like at the same time, there's a lot of context and nuance lost, you know, being a little guy from Appalachia who was not alive at the time and pretty much everything from the OJ shit that I saw was from SNL. That's the extent of what I know, growing up at least. According to retailers, the most popular Halloween mask this year is OJ Simpson. And the most popular Halloween greeting is I'll kill you and that guy who's bringing over your glasses or treat. With that, I would like to see what you guys think. Do you think that this was just revenge? This single woman from the jury seems to say that it was revenge and she says that 90% of everybody was just like, yeah, it's revenge for, for Rodney King, dude, of course. Like, that's what we were doing back in the day, man. We don't care about justice or, or what's right and wrong. We don't give a f Cause you guys don't give a f you know? So like, it's, it makes sense, but at the same time, it's like, wow, bro is definitely guilty as f He's like a murderer that was just walking around, just got away with it. What a lucky fucker. After we finished filming, OJ said to me that uh, he had a surprise for me, and I genuinely was surprised. So following the conclusion, the outrageous conclusion that he was in fact uh, not guilty, uh, somehow, OJ made himself scarce to the public eye for a while until all the shit blew over. But not after doing a couple silly interview pranks, guys. After we finished filming, OJ said to me that uh, he had a surprise for me, and I genuinely was surprised. I think it was his idea of a joke. And this is it. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? That's pretty funny. What a silly joke that is. God, what a silly troll, man. He just pretended to stab the interviewer directly after stabbing and killing his ex-wife. Allegedly. And somehow getting away with it. The worst of all this is when he agreed to an open panel of questions and people just called in and asked him stuff. <laughs> Unbelievable, dude. Why the f did they think this is a good idea? Um, my kid, my kid Chris was wondering, do you think it was a bigger feat to break 2,000 yards in one season or slice two necks in one night? I, I'm, so, I'm having a little trouble, Kevin, hearing you. Um, I... All right, Alex is listening to us in Ohio. Hey, Alex. Yes. Hey, Alex. Hey, how you doing? Not Juice? bad. <laughs> Juice, can you hear me, Juice? Yes, I can hear you, buddy. Yeah, uh, I was 
Remember when you played for the 49ers? Yeah. Yeah, did you kill Bill Walsh? People literally just ask him if he murdered people the whole time. It's so funny, and I love it. And it's just like, you can tell how uncomfortable he is. Like, I, I, I'm having trouble hearing you. Yes, I did murder my wife and ex-wife. Sorry, of course. I don't want to mix that up. And her boyfriend. But it, let's move on. I'd rather not speak on this. Then, guys, he wrote a book called If I Did It. And that's fucking unbelievable. You can't even make shit up like that. That is not something you could write into a reality TV show. And that means write a book called If I Did It. What does that even mean? How can you write a book called If I Did It? What is If I Did It? Well, it's the tale of OJ if he murdered his wife. Yeah, sort of a controversial book to write, especially when you actually did murder your wife and then just got away with it somehow. The book sparked instant and constant incessant controversy. He sold the book by hopping on a, a really awesome interview. He sort of stumbled after the 47 minute mark and had a bit of a Freudian slip. You go through the back gate. Yes. And it was open or broken or? I don't recall. Okay. I go to the front and I'm looking to see what's going on. Um, and I can see that it appears like Nicole had, fly, I had candles all the time. She really did to keep her overhead down, I think. I hate to say this, but this is like, I'm right, sorry. Right. I know we got to back up again. Right. It's <laughs> okay. Know? I'm going to back this up. This is hard. This is this hard. Is hard. To, I know. Yeah, I'm going to back up to. It's hard to try to make people think that I'm. <laughs> that was quite a few Freudian slips, it seems like there. In the book, of course. In the book. I, I, he took the knife in the book. The back gate was broken. It, it, or I actually don't remember how... I don't remember if the back gate was broken or open. I don't remember if it was in the book or what happened. What was it in real life? I don't recall. Huh? Are you shitting me? How about the part where he hypothetically talks about the fight, where he remembers grabbing the knife? I think Charlie had followed this guy in, one make sure it was no problem, and he brought the knife. As things got heated, uh, I just remember Nicole fell and hurt herself. And uh, this guy kind of got into a karate thing. And I said, well, you think you can kick my ass? And I remember I grabbed a knife. I do remember that portion, taking a knife from Charlie. And to be honest, after that, I don't remember. Hypothetically, of course. Or the part a little further on when he talks about getting rid of bloody clothes, guys. How about that? Somebody's got to get rid of, uh, as you may have called during the trial, is that wear the bloody clothes. So somebody had to get rid of the bloody clothes. Right. And you had left your keys and wallet in your pants pocket and you had to go back and get it? You know, to be honest, uh, I think, I, I know that to be true, yes. Yes. Um, and Charlie is hysterical screaming, Jesus Christ, OJ, Jesus Christ, and you tell him to yeah, shut up? Yeah, he's in a panic. He was in a panic, and I'm telling him to shut up. Let's get out of here. And the, part, uh, and the part of him having to go get the keys. Look at his face. His fucking face. He knows this shit is true. It's a, This is crazy. Shortly after that, he pontificates how people could possibly believe that he would kill and murder two people when his whole life meant something, guys. He had a beautiful football career. That's what he's implying, I think. It seems so easy listening to TV that week that it was that easy for people to believe that I could, I could kill two people. I thought that my whole life uh, meant something. I thought the type of guy that I had lived my life, being a pretty upstanding guy. I mean, I like everybody had my faults, like most men in, in my position. Uh, Sometimes temptations of the flesh is there, you know. But for the most part, I've always thought I was a straight shooter. Straight shooter. Mm -hmm. In any event, uh, that that was hard for me to, to to accept that it was so easy for people to. Um, I uh, believe that. The book, fiasco, terrible idea. Absolutely bad, terrible idea. It seems like he just wanted money or something for some reason and it sold real, real, real well. Publishers questioned it. The ghostwriter was like, bro, this guy absolutely did it. OJ even went as far as paying to be able to make the claim that he wrote the book. And that was on that interview. That's insane. Pablo Finvis, a screenwriter and witness at Simpson's 1995 trial, ghost wrote Simpson's book. Finvis stated in interviews that Simpson actively collaborated on the manuscript and that Finvis knew Simpson was a murderer. Believe it or not, there was a bit of a lawsuit and the Goldman family won the rights to the book. That's right. The guy that was murdered by O.J. Simpson, his family won the rights 
to the book. The publisher changed the ownership to them and they renamed it, I Did It. The family was also awarded $33.5 million in a civil case. I mean, you can't make shit like this up. This is fucking unbelievable. It's unbelievable. But this shit doesn't matter to a actual psychopath like Orange Juice Simpson. His pride, it's too strong to disappear forever. So he decided to do something a little different. He started a fucking social media and he got real, real, real wild. He talked to his fans, he talked to his haters. God, I love this shit. It's so funny, man. Hey, Twitter world, this is yours truly. Now, coming soon to Twitter, you'll get to read all my thoughts and opinions on just about everything. Now, there's a lot of fake OJ accounts out there. So this one, at the real OJ32, is the only official one. So this should be a lot of fun. I got a little getting even to do. So God bless. Take care. What the f*** does that mean? Didn't you get acquitted? And like, you, they got to get even with you, man. Don't get even anymore. You don't need to get even anymore. You're gonna, fucking, you're gonna transcend if you get any more even. You died. Hey, Twitter world. You know, for years, people have been able to say whatever they want to say about me, with no accountability. But now I get to challenge a lot of that BS and set the record straight. More importantly, I'll be able to talk about everything, especially sports, fantasy, football, and even politics. But for now, let me just say to my fellow fathers out there, happy Father's Day. He reminds me of like what I imagine Garth Brooks is like. Like this guy is provably what a lot of people like to joke and hypothetically imagine Garth Brooks is like. This guy is actually a murderer. He posted so many videos on Twitter. He loves Twitter. It was uh, 66 years ago, 1957 that I attended my very first professional football game. And that game was the 49ers versus the Lions in what was a playoff game, which is unusual because they didn't really play playoff games, but the way the season ended. Yeah, anyways, he died of cancer. He went radio silent and died of cancer. So what do you guys think, heaven or hell? I think hell because he's a murderer and he got away with it. And I feel like that's pretty f***ed up and you shouldn't be able to do that. Lots of memes whole lots of memes my favorite meme though is not a meme it's an actual real interaction between a fan and oj and it's uh you know pretty funny anyways guys thanks for watching this episode comment down below if you think he's innocent or if you think he's actually guilty anyways